Hi, it's Anika. I want to talk to you today about the fact that your sin, yep, your sin, if you're a brother or sister in Christ, is my problem as well. Um, I am afraid that to say that um, the church has really taken on so many of the habits of the world. And one of those habits is the, the, the mindset of every man is an island and you know, you do what you do, you stay in your corner, just as long as you don't bother me. But that's not the mindset that we should have in the body of Christ, because he didn't call us to be an island. He called us to be a body, right? We're all connected. So your sin impacts me. And I, I, I mentioned before that I was reading through the book of Ezra and in Ezra chapter Chapter nine, we see, um, you know, Ezra came back uh, with the second group of exiles, and you know, he was reading the law and just reminding the people of God's law. And some of the Jewish leaders came to him and brought to his attention that um, a lot of the people, especially the leaders, had intermarried with the pagan woman. And when Ezra heard this, he became so burdened. The scripture says that um, he had such a repentant heart. He wept bitterly. Now, it wasn't Ezra who did this. It was his brothers who committed this sin, but Ezra took it on as if it were his own. And he brought it before the Lord with such a repentant heart. He didn't say, well, you know what? That's their issue. I'm straight with God. I'm good. I know the law and I'm obeying it. He was just in utter shock because of the sense of his brothers, right? And he brought it before the Lord and he said, you know what, Lord, I, I recognize that I recognize that we have displeased you. I recognize that it's our sins that, you know, caused us to be carried into captivity in the first place. Oh God, we have disappointed you, you know? And he cried out and he wept on behalf of his brothers. He had a heart of repentance. And I think sometimes um, for us, when we see another brother or sister in Christ, Christ um, in sin, wallowing in sin, and, and, and just kind of drifting from the Lord, we turn a blind eye and we use the excuse that, oh, it's not my business to judge. I'm not God. But no, we're accountable one to another. And my thing is, I'm not judging you. I'm calling out sin with the intention of helping you to be restored back to Christ. It's such a selfish mindset when we turn a blind eye to sin, knowing that we have, you know, what it takes. We can minister to the, the person to restore them back into the right relationship with the Lord. And I, I love in, um, Galatians 6, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another Christian is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently, keyword, and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. So in, in Galatians, we see that, you know, Paul is telling them, listen, that's your job. Go out and help them, right? With humility and gently. You don't, you know, read them the right act and, and, and just be um, crude and evil. Your job is to try to help to restore them, right? Um, with humility. So I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't know that I always have this burden, right? Um, and I'm praying to have that burden and just getting outside of my individualistic mindset and recognizing again that I am connected to the body of Christ and I'm accountable to the body just like the body um, I'm supposed to be um, used as an instrument to help keep my brothers and sisters accountable as well. So if you know um, somebody that's naming the name of Christ and you see that they're struggling in sin, don't turn a blind eye. Pray and ask God to give you the wisdom to know to, to know what to do, how to approach them, right? With gentleness and with humility, with the intentions of restoring them back into um, the fold. All right, you be blessed.